What's up guys? It's Drew with Upstate 208. Today we are in the shop again, uh, doing something a little bit different today. It is just about the end of September and things are starting to get a little chilly. It's super overcast, it's raining outside, and it's just not very warm. I have a little quadrifier wood stove right here that I heat my shop with, and I wanted to go through cleaning the chimney on that and going through just your yearly maintenance on getting the stove ready. Something to know about me is I spent two years in central Alaska and while I was up there, I was specifically involved with working on wood stoves, uh, installing them, cleaning chimneys, repairing them. I also worked on a lot of oil, file, oil fired boilers, uh, pellet stoves, and even a little bit of gas stoves. So uh, at my time in Alaska, the company I was working for sent me down to Indianapolis to the Chimney Safety Institute of America, CSIA. It is a real thing, and it's uh, at the time that I was doing it, it was the only nationally recognized uh, chimney safety institute. So I went down there and I got my certifications in chimney sweeping. Disclaimer: I am no longer current on my qualification or on my uh, certification, so I don't practice that. I'm not involved with that business anymore. However, I do have an in-depth knowledge uh, of wood stoves how they operate, chimney systems, how they work, and also how to clean them up, keep them safe, and make sure that you are not putting yourself and or your family at risk. So this is a secondary combustion style wood stove, which means it's got a baffle plate in the top that's lined with some fire brick, and it's got some uh, heat exchange tubes in the top of it as well. So. Uh, the reason those are there is it reburns some of the unburned gases coming off of the wood and it helps kind of ignite those gases in the top of the stove uh, to make it more efficient, makes your wood burn longer, and ultimately it makes it clean burning, so or cleaner burning. So anyhow, uh, the stuff that I'm going to show you guys today is pretty much the same for uh, many of the wood stoves out on the market right now. So. A uh, couple of things that you're gonna want uh, are definitely a chimney brush and preferably some flexible chimney rods. So what I've got here is a nylon brush for my six inch chimney. Nylon brush is not aggressive at all. Um, it's just plastic bristles on here. So uh, anytime that you're sweeping a chimney that is uh, steel single wall chimney pipe and then I've got stainless steel double wall insulated chimney pipe up above that has a stainless steel uh, liner inside of it so we do not need to use uh, an aggressive wire brush inside of there in fact doing that could be counterproductive because it's a good way one to get your brush stuck in the chimney uh, if you have to force your brush down into a chimney like that, it's probably a good idea just to stop and back out. Um, if that's the only brush you have, you can take a pair of snips and snip it down a little bit to make it fit a little bit better inside that chimney. But be careful shoving a brush down into a chimney that's really, really tight because it's a good way to get it stuck. And once you do that, it's really hard to get it out. You're probably going to have to disassemble the chimney or shove something down there and that's just a good way to damage your system and you really don't want to do that. So for this case, uh, I am going to be dealing with extremely dry, uh, crusted creosote in my chimney. So I don't need something that's scratching the sides of it. I just need something to go down there and scrape the inside walls of that chimney and get all the stuff off. Secondly, I have some rods here that are flexible. These are just little two foot rods and these actually are designed for uh, cleaning out dryer vents. So in my case, uh, like always, I'm budget minded and trying to do things the, the least expensive I can and still do a good job. So I bought this little kit here on Amazon, I think, or eBay. 
Uh, it was very affordable. It came with the six inch brush. It also came with a four inch or three inch brush for the dryer vent. And it came with uh, several of these flexible rods. So these rods just screw together. Uh, as you're sweeping the chimney, you take these rods and you screw them together and you can build your length of pipe as needed to run down the chimney. Now, another thing to consider is I don't really want to get on the roof uh, and screw around with that right now. So I was just up there not long ago. It's raining outside today and gross. And so if I don't have to get up on my roof, there's no reason to do that. Uh, so what I'm going to do is actually clean this stove from the inside here. Now on my system, uh, it makes it fairly easy because I have a straight shot stove pipe and chimney system. It goes straight up and out the roof. So I don't have any bends, articulations in the pipe and that makes it a lot easier to work from the inside, outside, whatever. Anytime you got a bend or a uh, angle in your pipe, it is gonna make it more difficult. However, that is where getting a more flexible rod is gonna help you. There's a good chance that you could get these rods to flex through a 30 degree or a 15 degree angle in your stovepipe and just get it to track down through there so that you don't have to disassemble. Another thing to consider, uh, many of these systems, if installed by a professional or with the help of a professional, your stovepipe should have a slip section on it. So uh, that, uh, that device is exactly what it sounds like. It's a piece of pipe that actually telescopes over the one above it or below it, and it makes it very easy to disassemble your stovepipe and get it out for cleaning. I like to not have to deal with that if I don't have to. And the reason why is it's very hard to not make a mess when you're doing that, especially if this thing lives inside your house. So I'm gonna keep everything put together. I'm gonna to bring you guys in and give you some close-ups here of what I'm doing because I am dealing with a baffle system in the top of this stove. So always be aware of what you're cleaning. If you're just going up on your roof and shoving a rod down in your chimney and calling it good, uh, be careful of that because if you're sweeping out a bunch of creosote out of your chimney, it has to go somewhere and you gotta get rid of it or you're gonna have a very high risk of a potential uh, chimney fire. And that is something you definitely want to avoid. So I'm gonna bring you guys in, I'm gonna show you what the inside of this stove looks like and it's gonna be very similar to many of the stoves out there on the market today. The way you have to do it may vary slightly but you can get the overall principle of what I'm doing. So. With further ado, let's get into this thing and we're gonna try and do it without making a mess and getting ourselves all jacked up. Okay guys, so here is my little stove. It sits in the corner here. I'm gonna open this door up. I have not touched this thing since the last time I burned it last uh, winter, spring, whenever it may have been. So I'm gonna take a look inside of here and I'm gonna need a light to show you that. Another thing to always check is your seal around the door. And I just replaced this one last year. So you can see that it's nice and fat still, looks good, condition, still got some, some spring to it. It's not just hard and crusted in there, so I know I'm getting a good seal on everything. And that is important to allow this stove to work properly. Okay, so we're taking a look inside the stove. So we've still got lots of ash in there. And the main thing of concern is right up here is my baffle system. So, I'll give you a little bit better light. So if you look up here in the baffle, you can see I've got a steel plate that sits on top of an exchange tube system. And on top of that steel plate are fire bricks. So, the first thing that I wanna do is I wanna get those fire bricks off the top of the baffle. And by doing that, I am going to reach inside of here and pull those out. I would say to make note of how they are coming out, and it's not even a bad idea to place those bricks on the floor next to you in the same pattern that they come out so that you're not fiddling around with it because it can be difficult to get up there and see what's going on. So I'm gonna do that and show you the next step.
Okay guys, so I've got all my bricks out. And like I said, I laid them out in the way that they came out. That way I know how to put them back. So, looking inside the stove now, you can see I've got this baffle kind of caddied in there. So that steel baffle sits on a couple of rails up in the top of the stove there. And I have simply taken that and lifted it up on this side here to try and kind of put it at an angle. And now I've got a decent amount of, you know, I've got maybe three inches of space in this cavity right here. And I'm going to take my chimney brush and run it up through here. And I can reach my arm up in here. So I'm able to get my arm in there to work around. So I'm gonna take my chimney brush and I'm gonna run it up in there and I'm gonna guide it into the flue of the top of the stove. Once I get that going, I can just start adding rods to it and I'm gonna sweep the chimney from the bottom up. It is not a bad idea if you're going to do that this way to get yourself a vacuum and get yourself a shop vac going that has a filter on it and you wanna leave it running because you're gonna start creating a lot of dust and creosote coming out of the face of this fireplace. So not a bad way to uh, make a huge mess if you just start sweeping and you don't have something set up. So I'm gonna get that set up and we'll take it from there. Okay guys, I'm uh, all set up here and getting ready to sweep this thing out. So make sure my rods are all pointing the right way as far as threads go. And that's really all there is to it. So, like I said, I'm gonna take my first rod, screw it onto the end of the brush. Make sure you tighten these up. Don't just put them, you know, give them a good, uh, good snug so that they don't come loose while you're doing this. So, I've got my baffle at an angle here, and it makes it easy to shove that in and pass. And I'm gonna keep going. I've just felt it go into the flue. Now I don't think I can naturally make that bend. So I gotta kinda talk it into going up there. And I just felt it start to make the curve and go up that way. So I'm on my way to cleaning the chimney. I've got the end of my rod sticking out here so I can add another length to it. And we're gonna go for it. I got my vacuum hose right here stuck up into the baffle to catch all the stuff as it's coming out and keep the dust down. So we're going to get that going, and I will cue the fancy music now. Okay, so I am to the top. I'm hitting the top of my chimney cap. Uh, I will shoot out and show you guys what I'm working with as far as the chimney cap goes. But you wanna be careful when you're getting up there. I left the chimney cap on uh, so that I don't just run my rods up and all the way through. And I noticed uh, when I was outside, and I'll show you guys a shot of this, but I've got some creosote and stuff built up on my cap, and that is a prime spot to check if you're having weird drafting issues with your stove during the season. Uh, a lot of the time, the cap gets clogged up, and then it just makes it to where the stove won't breathe. You'll start getting burnt back where the stove's blowing smoke back in when you open the door, things like that going on. So uh, shoving the brush up there is actually gonna help me clean some of that off. So I'm at the top, not violent, uh, but I like to give it a few little taps, run downs, up and down while I'm in there. And I'm feeling pretty good about it. So I'm gonna pull this back out the same way I did and go from there. chimney and as you can see on my last little pull when the brush popped out of the flue right there it kicked out a bunch of uh, creosote so that is why you want to run a vacuum so I did get a blast of creosote out of here 
but I could see it the whole time while I was going up. There was just dust flowing all over the place in here and creosote and everything else. So having the shop back on and going will definitely make it a cleaner job and uh, just make it so you're not having a huge mess and coat and everything. So uh, I've got the chimney all cleaned out now. Everything's good. I've gotten all the creosote out of the flue and down into the top of the stove here. So now I'm going to take my shop back and I'm gonna vacuum out all the creosote that may be laying on top of this baffle. So this is an important part. If you're gonna go through all the work to clean your chimney, make sure that you clean the entire stove as well. So you wanna make sure that there's not a bunch of creosote caked up somewhere that's hard to see. So spend your time, uh, go through here with the shop back and make sure you get everything uh, cleaned up, put together, and when you're all done, put things together how you found it, and Start burning. All right, guys. Well, we got the chimney all cleaned out. Feeling good about it. I've got my baffle plate back where it's supposed to go. It is important to make sure that your baffle plate is pushed back and tight against the back of the stove. That is where it wants to live. Its job is to hold the heat in the firebox and try and reburn some of the uh, unburned uh, gases uh, coming off of the fire. So you got to make sure it's pushed all the way back as tight as you can. Otherwise, you're going to be getting heat passing by the back plate, and it's going to make your stove not work the way that it was designed to and as efficiently as it was designed to. So now I am putting my baffle bricks back in the way that they came out. Everything's tight and snug in there and pushed back as far as it can go. I'm feeling pretty dang good about that. Uh, I'm gonna go outside and check my chimney cap. It's raining out real bad right now and so I just don't wanna get on my roof and screw around with it, but uh, I think we're done. Let's fight by the fire in this baby. Well guys, we got the chimney cleaned out. We got the stove cleaned up. She's ripping and roaring and ready to go for hopefully a long, hard, vicious, snowy winter. If this video was helpful to you, please like it. Uh, if you have questions or comments about cleaning your chimney, uh, screwing with a wood stove, I may be able to help you. And if I can, I'm happy to do that. So leave a comment. If you guys aren't subscribed to Upstate 208, please do so. Hit that little subscribe button and just check it out. See what we got going on. And if you have suggestions, comments, videos that you would like to see, let me know so I know what in the heck I should do next. Until I see you again, take care and keep it real.